I want you to recall the last project you've worked on. Can you remember every implementation detail? What about the project you worked on six months ago? Can you tell me a bit more about the challenges you faced, decisions you made, and why you made those decisions? If you need to work on a similar project today, will it be easy for you to recall all that code implementations, algorithms, and configurations easily? Our memory sucks when we need to remember details. We find it easier to remember when we experience something, some event, especially when we feel certain emotions during that event. But anyway, most of the times we remember only the big picture. All the details fade away with time. And of course, our memory is even worse when we need to remember technical details. Even if we remember some details, it's still very hard for us to fetch it from our memory when we need it. How do top software engineers easily recall what they worked on years ago and leverage their experience? How do they remember where to find the right answer or creative solution? Their memory isn't better than yours, in some cases even worse. So how do they do that? There is no magic. They use different techniques that allow them to recall an information when they need it. I want to share with you the technique that I use. It's called Pocket Stories. I learned from my mate, talented software engineer, team leader and blogger Boris. Right, his name is Boris, same like me. He delivered an insightful presentation on this topic at a major developer conference in Tel Aviv. So, inspired by his talk, I decided to give it a try. It's a real game changer and it doesn't need a lot of effort. You'll see how your life becomes easier and how your value as a software engineer increases within your company. I'll tell you what pocket stories are, how you collect them and how you can get the most of them for your career. Pocket stories are small pieces of information that can be used to advance your narrative. The best thing is that you can fetch a relevant story whenever you need it to support an idea you're trying to explain. It doesn't really matter what a story you remember is. The most important thing is that you remember at least something. Then you can fetch the relevant details and use them easily. So how you can build your collection of pocket stories. First of all, you need to take 30 minutes in the end of the day, every day, to make a short retrospective of your day. Try to think about your success, even a small one during your day. Think about your failures today. And of course, think about what you've learned. The last one is the most important because it doesn't really matter if it's success or failure. What really matters is how you can use your experience, both positive and negative, in the future. Write it down in your Google Doc, Notion template. You can use a simple Apple Notes app wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. If you ask me, I personally prefer a simple notes app, as it can easily be used on my iPhone and my MacBook. And to be honest, I just used to it. <laughs> Simply choose the option that suits you best. So what and how should you write down? It can be a bug, it can be a creative solution, not necessarily yours, or it can even be a summary of a meeting with a product manager that everyone has left in tears. So you can write down a short description and the most important details in a short form. You need to write down a bare minimum that will help you to recall a full story behind it if you take a look at it in the future. Trust me, everything will sit better in your memory if you go over it again in the end of the day, and especially when you visualize it by writing it down. This is already a great advantage of this technique. After you write it down, you need to put the relevant tag, so your pocket story will be searchable. Let me show you an example of how I do it. Okay, so you see, first of all, I divide pocket stories into different sections. For example, this is, this is a section where I usually save different technical details and tech stuff that I learn. Every day I put the date, and then I just simply write down what I learned today. Actually, you can see that it's not today, but you know, I just don't want to share with you all my pocket stories. So I have chosen something that is not too big and actually is a good example. So we were discussing why we were not using foreign keys in our Postgres database. And the most important thing for me during that discussion were actually the reasons that led to a certain decision not to use foreign keys in the database. I put here the relevant tags, database and Postgres. Maybe it looks a little bit boring at the moment, 
But trust me, in the future, maybe in a year or two, when we will start working on a new project and when we will have to create a new database for that project, I will search the relevant tag and I will read this small story and probably this story will help me to make the right decision. I bet that without this pocket story, I'll be able to recall maybe just the fact that we didn't use foreign keys in the past, but with this pocket story, I'll be able to explain the reasons why we decided not to use the foreign keys. So as you have already guessed, feature groomings, design decisions, uh, technical discussions are all the classic cases for the pocket stories. We need to decide on something and I do know that I have worked on something like this in the past. I can search for a tag, find the relevant pocket story in my collection and share my experience with others. So it will be easier to understand if our decision is good or bad. Pocket stories can be also used as different examples during the technical meetings. Pocket stories are extremely valuable for job interviews. Let's assume you are a senior developer, you work on different things here and there, maybe fix some bugs, mentor other developers, make code reviews. Or maybe you're even a tech lead like me, so you barely write any code. And most of the time you research the problems, you try new technologies, and uh, participate in design meetings. How can you show your value during your job interview? You can't just say, you know, I do a lot of things, I tackle it. Your interviewer wants to hear your story. Just go through your pocket stories before your interview, choose something that looks impressive, in your opinion, check the technical details that will become a baseline for your specific story. That will help you to show your value during the interview. Boris, during his talk, gave a nice example of how a generic sentence like I was working on database cost optimization can be turned into an exciting story. Just tell the details. We were using DynamoDB. We learned about our data model. We learned how DynamoDB charges users. After that, we built a plan and followed it. We found a redundant data and stopped writing it to save on writes. We added cache to save on traffic. We built a unique TTL mechanism to save on storage. After that, we saved around 40% of our costs and got an extra discount from AWS. If you don't write down these details, you won't be able to build a complete story in the future. And in my opinion, this story is pretty impressive as it shows that you can not only code, but also manage projects, analyze data, find creative solutions, learn alone, and so on. It really shows your value to the interviewer. It can be useful not only for the interview process, but also for your current job, as you can show your value during your one-on-one -on -one meetings with your manager or your performance reviews. You can come to a performance review with a relevant story and ask for a raise because you have a real proof of your value. Also, you can use these stories as an example of the projects that you would like to work on in the next quarter, maybe. You can use them to set your new challenges for the nearest future. You can use pocket stories for your retro meetings. This eliminates the need to struggle a day before the retrospective meeting, attempting to recall both the positive and negative sides of the project you've been working on for the past few months. It's important to mention that pocket stories help you to come ready for every meeting. Trust me, it looks pretty impressive for your managers. Also, if you want to write a blog post, talk on a meetup, conference, tech forum, you can use one of your pocket stories. I bet it will be way more easier for you to find an interesting story that you would like to share. Maybe an exotic bug you fixed or an interesting or creative solution that you implemented a year ago or even more. And one more interesting thing, it really helps to grow your self-confidence. It's working like a charm. Do I pronounce it correctly? Well, it doesn't matter. It just it just works. There is a big chance you will never suffer from an imposter syndrome. You'll see that you've done valuable things. If you already suffer from an imposter syndrome, you'll still feel that there are a lot of people around that are much smarter than you. But it won't hit you heavily as you'll see your pocket stories. You'll see that you've done valuable things. And also you'll see that you are learning from that people. You are learning something valuable that you will be able to use in the future. Also, it will help you with harder tasks and projects without burning out. As every pocket story is a kind of a celebration of your success, a small milestone that you achieve literally every day. So let's recap. 
our memory sucks. Build a story to memorize your experience. Tell a story to bring a value. Just try out pocket stories yourself and you'll see how they can change your life. Hit the like button if you find this video useful and see you in the next one.